there, I'm your host, Dan Rojas, and you can see that I was having some fun last night making some spin art. This video actually doesn't have anything to do with spin art. It's got to do with magnetically levitated wind turbines and how you can take a vertical wind turbine and add two neodymium magnets and basically get it to float. Now, it's not frictionless, meaning that there's no friction at all. It is frictionless, meaning that there is less friction than if you had a bearing. It's particularly interesting if you have a rather heavy turbine because the neodymium magnets actually work very well supporting a heavier load as they get closer together. Now one advantage to this is the fact that it acts as a really nice shock absorber too. So any vibrations that a larger wind turbine would create, say it's on top of your roof, can actually be canceled out by the levitated magnets. So I'm going to show you that real simply and at the end of the video I'm going to goof around and make a little spin art. What I have right here is one of the center cutouts from the wind turbine that I recommended that you don't throw away. It's spinning on a rod which in and of itself is not all that impressive. What is impressive is this, the way that it is doing it. There's no bearing on this. If we lift this up, what I have here are two neodymium magnets. They have approximately 95 pounds of pull a piece to them. And when you put the poles so that they uh, repel each other, you can't push it down even as hard as you try. It's almost impossible to get them to uh, touch together. There is some friction with the magnets. It's very minor, but where this comes into play is with a heavier wind turbine. As the weight of the turbine increases, you still end up with basically about the same friction. So if you have a 30 pound turbine, it's going to work the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this low and then we're going to stack some weights on it. I'm going to show you exactly how powerful this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, roughly 30 inch piece of plywood. This weighs about three pounds. It's, it's not that heavy. But if you watch when I set it on there, you can see how it acts as a shock absorber. Now that's pretty impressive. You can see we can spin it pretty fast. Even though it's unstable, you can see that the... Now, what I'm going to do next is take... This is a 13.2 pound or 6 kilo steel weight. And I used it for a cement mold. But watch when I put this on there. You can see that there's still space between those those bearings. I don't know if, if I lift it up. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. You still have space between the two. Now that is with, uh, that's about 17 pounds total between the wood and the weight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack a second plate on there. So that'll push it up to right at 30 pounds with everything. There's 30 pounds. And you can see that it still spins pretty freely. I'm going to take the other, uh, this groovy painting thing. This weighs about 5 pounds. So this is going to push it up to 30, a little over 30, 33 pounds, 34 pounds. And you can see that the magnets are still not touching together. So I can spin this. And the whole load's spinning right now. So you can see the bottom magnet stays stationary and the top one basically spins with the load. And this is what's going on. It's not very balanced, but it's working considering I just drilled a hole in my tabletop. And so what I did last night, just uh, by the way, in regards to the spin art, is I took all of these spray cans and I basically took this and gave it a nice spin and actually used an air compressor. That's why this is uh, on there is I used an air compressor to, to blow this and I was able to get this up to around 250-300 uh, RPMs which it's not that bad but this isn't this is a cam gear it's not really designed for that so now in regards to uh, getting generating power from a vertical wind turbine a lot of people will take copper coils and coil them 
or put neodymium magnets all around the base of the turbine and then have the copper coils below this and you get alternating current that needs to be converted into direct current. That's the easiest way that I know of to create a magnetically levitated wind turbine. Now a viewer did send me an idea in regards of taking two wind turbines, placing them on the same vertical axis, putting the blades in one direction on one and the other direction on the other so that they spin in opposite directions and one that would have the magnetic neodymium magnets and the other one would have the copper coils pretty much increase the voltage. Um, we're going to be covering that in future videos. We're going to be hooking up power to these, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and now I'm going to show you some silly spin art. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos. Thank you.